born. Yeah. And I thought about Christ and he said, I'm laying out before you what I want. Then I'm saying, don't let that come to pass. But let what you want come to pass. Hmm. But I was, I was, and he was the most selfless being ever. I just, I said, I'm going to make sure I'm, I pattern myself after that. Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Really mean that. Uh, the past couple weeks we've been talking and I wish a few other people were here because this was directed for some others but I mean, it's a lot in it for everybody but uh, I got about since the last time we talked several phone calls and it was all about tithing it was all about uh, people didn't understand my view on it or or why I believe what I believe. And uh, wanted a better explanation about it. And I thought about it and I said, you know what? I've never actually sat down and went into the word of God about it. Never mm -hmm. searched the scriptures about it. Mm -hmm. And not just stopping there. But the principle in the heart that God wants us to have. And not just about your giving but everything. So I prayed on it. I studied on it. And I said, okay. We'll go into that. Before we do, it's okay to agree to disagree about, you know, we're, we're not here to convince anybody of anything. So, we're here to open the Word of God, see what the Word of God says about it, and let that be the final authority. It's fellowship. You see what I mean? And, and it's always open to well, I see it this way. We don't, you know, we don't shun that. And I, I really like that because you don't get that anywhere else. You don't get an opportunity to come before a group of believers, seasoned believers, and, and for, for the most part, and to be able to say, I don't understand, or this is what I see, and this is what I understand. And uh, the heart that God is, is giving me is one of, Simply, everything in the life of a believer is based on love. Everything. And I think it covers every single aspect of life. And whenever we get away from that, you step into something else. And something else that, that God did not intend for you to be in. And I just wanted to take a little time to go into the scriptures about it. To actually see what the word of God says about it. I'm not telling anybody what to do. I just want to relay what the word says. Amen? Amen. So I, because, you know what? I've gotten a lot of persecution. <laughs> a lot of, uh, I don't know, ugly stares or whatnot because it's an issue that I'm going to conform on. But when it comes to the throne of God, none of y'all will stand with me. I'm going to stand by myself. Vice versa. You stand alone. You stand alone. You can't say to God, well, I did it because such and such said so. Mm -hmm. Or I went this way because this pastor said so. Or I did this because such and such said so. God said, I gave you my word. That's right. Just like I gave it to them, I gave it to you. <laughs> and as Romans says, we're without excuse. That's right. So, I mean, <laughs> like it or not, that is what I stand on. Mm -hmm. I want to look at it from two different perspectives. Biblically, word upon word, piece upon upon precept but also principle. And I pray that it goes beyond just the word time, but it goes into the heart condition that the church has fallen into and that we're able to see where God will want us to go. The first place I want to go to is in the law. Turn to Leviticus Twenty-seven, I believe. Is that right, Rob? In uh, verse, let's start at. Uh, 